Hey yo, this is Dash, and this is your opportunity to ask me anything you want to. Well, almost anything. If you guys don't know, if you weren't around for last year, during the month of December, when barbecue views are down, we got to do something to help get those views back up. That being said, what I'm going to do for the month of December is you guys get to ask me almost anything. So all you have to do is leave a comment down below, ask me your question, and I hopefully will get to respond to it in the form of a video. So don't be bashful. It really won't take more than about half the month to hopefully get enough questions for me to answer and do a video every single day. I really would like for you to ask me a question down in the comments below. Thanks as always for watching, and I hope to answer your question soon. All right, all right, we are back at it. And this should serve as episode, Ask-2020 episode number 12. And boy, oh boy, do I have a doozy for you. So my man Justin from Papa Bear's Kitchen, he, 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 this is, this is his first rodeo, his first go round with the, with the ask dash situation. So he just went and asked every question. He, he asked, he, it looks like he tried to get to 20 questions. Uh, he didn't get to 20, but so I'm going to try and answer all of his questions in this episode. So Justin, this episode is for you, my man. Justin also is a Patreon supporter. So thank you so very much, Justin, for, for your support on Patreon. And those of you who are also supporters on Patreon, don't forget, if you wanted to help the channel, support the channel, you too can become a patron. And with that Patreon membership, you get early access to the videos. Anyway, <clears throat> let's go. So he says, starting out, should I bother with licenses, permits, insurance? For me, I'm going to tell you, your mileage may vary. You're going to have to find out what you need to find out, or, or you're going to have to find out what rules are going to apply for your specific area. I can't give you that information. Now, the one thing that I did and made sure that I did to try to protect myself was I created an LLC to separate my personal assets from my business assets so that if something happens and someone tries to sue me, and my business, they're going to get my business assets and not my personal assets. So that's one of one tip of advice I'll give you. How often do you try new flavor profiles and or techniques? I try to tell you guys, well, I tell you guys every now and again, I do try something new, but I do not always film it. There have been plenty of times where I've tried different things and I filmed it and I didn't particularly care for the, uh, the results. So as opposed to putting up a lackluster video or, or give, putting out a, a lackluster product for me to show off, I just don't film it. Like the first time I, I cook almost anything, I usually don't film it so that I can go through and do a dry run. But I do try new things. It's just that sometimes my family isn't the most accepting and I am not always able to cook just for myself to try something brand new and or a new technique. <sighs> Number three says, which meats do you pair with, uh, with which wood? So this goes back to my um, what type of wood I use type video. And in that video, I talked about geographics. I don't really have a, I use pecan with this or I use apple with that. I cook with what I can get. Um, if you have the ability to, to purchase and or buy or access to more boutique woods or boutique woods, however you want to say it, then that might be something that you can can deal with or use. But my arborist, my, my guy Bob, when he hooks me up with wood or if I find wood on the side of the road and I'm, I'm going to be using it to cook with, I really don't care what it is. I'm going to be using it. So I don't have a preference uh, as to what, you know, it's... I don't, I don't pair my wood like I would a wine with my meat, if that makes sense. I use what I have available. All right. Uh, number four says, if you could give Young Dash advice about the food business, what would it be? Start earlier. <laughs> Get out there and, and start earlier and, and, and start pushing. The, the thing that I think 
if I could tell myself five years ago what I know now is just to 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 act as if that's one of those things that I say every now and again act as if and I would have pushed myself to act as if um, there's you, you got to look up act as if Ben Affleck and the movie Boiler Room and I think last year when I did this I talked about or I answered a question and one of the the responses was was about acting as if and it's act as you know so act act as act as if is almost akin to fake it until you make it okay number five says why'd you start a YouTube channel I started a YouTube channel to watch YouTube videos and then it became a I won't say an outlet but I had some free time or downtime I won't say free time I had downtime at work and then I started doing these animations and and the don't you hate it win thing and then it morphed and transformed into me doing barbecue and and cooking videos to help a friend of mine my buddy Andrew who was who had some questions and as opposed to me responding to him via text message or like a, a you know on the phone I said you know what I'll do you one better I'll put it on video and he wasn't the only one that started watching the videos and the rest is pretty much history number six is what is your marketing strategy cook good food people people eat good food people talk about good food rinse and repeat I don't have a marketing strategy I mean I do different things to market myself but I don't have a I'm going to you know cold call this amount of people I'm going to send them this amount of emails I'm going to do this amount of, I don't do I don't do that I have too many other things going on in my life now I will tell you when I first got my start and I was doing things on or selling food via Instagram what I did and I've talked about this before in the past what I did was I spent a lot of time on Instagram using the hashtag Baltimore and because I live in Baltimore geographic hashtags are going to be your friend when it comes to trying to find people to look at you now what people don't understand is the hashtag is not for someone to find you necessarily it's for you to find other people and you can use the hashtag that someone else used to your advantage to your business advantage I, how I used it I will search Baltimore and I will find people in Baltimore whenever I found someone that posted a food picture or something like that I would like the picture whenever I found someone that would post anything basically I would like the picture I would comment on certain pictures and say hey that looks awesome hey that looks great it wouldn't be the same comment I would change the comment up every single time but what that did was that made that person say who the hell is this steel drum smokers who who is that and then what they would do is they would come back to my profile my page and they would look and when you look at my my Instagram the first thing it says is I deliver smoked meats or I cater you know one to a hundred plus I deliver and I'm gonna tell you boom real quick what I do and then I'm gonna make sure there's some pictures of my food right there so it's, it's like when you see you're like oh wait a minute hold up oh man this guy's got ribs oh ooh, what's this brisket stuff pulled pork man lamb salmon whatever the case may be and that's how it kind of snowballed or how I got my start now how it snowballed is again via Instagram as soon as I would take food to someone and they would have it I would ask them to do me a solid and, and take a picture of it and repost it to Instagram so it's it was word of mouth that initially got me out there so recently you guys have seen me talk about the stickers I talk about the calendars where I have calendars so I have little like marketing tchotchkes almost that that it is you, you guys see I'm wearing a shirt a bill I am the billboard of my company so this is a marketing tool though I don't necessarily think of it it's my brand no one's gonna talk about my brand more than I am so what can I do to talk about my brand my vehicles have unique license plates that get people asking about whatever it, you know what's going on hey what what does that mean what what is that you know what what is that and then boom I hand them some business cards okay when I'm standing out and I, I can see people when you wear a, I'm gonna say an obnoxious shirt but when you wear a shirt that has some writing on it you can see people physically reading the shirt they're not subtle they're not they're not 
So, hey, why don't I give you a couple of business cards and whenever you need somebody to come and cook for you at your next, next family gathering or your next event, I can do that for you so you can enjoy your event. I'll cook for you, you just pay me, <laughs> all right? So, long-winded, I don't really have a strategy. I just, I don't know, I sell myself. How about that? Number six, the second time, says, what what's your video editing process uh, so video editing is one of those things that that is very personal because everyone is going to do your their videos differently and I start my video editing process before or when I'm filming okay I give myself visual visual cues so if you ever see me wave my hands or like do something that's a visual cue to say start the camera or this is where you're going to start the edit and then i have to kind of print train myself to whenever i'm going to do something like that so it's like all right so in this video for instance all right i'm going to say all right so blah 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 blah, blah. all right next question number seven he says or Technically, number six, twice, the second time around. He says, what's your video editing process? You see what I did there? I gave myself a visual cue so that I could get my thoughts together, get myself together, and then, boom, I say what I have to say. Now, one of the things that I've been trying to do as of late, recently, now I haven't done it very well with these videos, is to edit out the ums and the ah. Um, um, the, uh, um, uh, um, 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 I had someone call me out on it some years ago, and it is something that I notice now very, very much. So I try to edit out the ums, um, 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 ah, ah, ah. everybody has those, those bridge words, those bridge fate phrases. And I try to edit mine out. One of the other things too I say often is I will start talking and I'll be like, again, blah 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 blah. I, I, you know, I. But sometimes I don't say it the first time because it'll be an again from a previous video, not an again from that current video. So these are some things that I think about when I'm talking to the camera and when I'm trying to edit those things out. So that's my like thought process before I even get to the to start editing. Then what my my process is, I take the video from my video card and I put it to I have a portable hard drive that I put this information on. Once I save it to the portable hard drive, I then also make a copy and I save it to my I have a network attached storage where I keep every single video I filmed and then I start editing. And in the editing, I use a video editing program called Corel Video Studio. And I believe I'm using uh, version 20, 2020, like the ultimate or the pro or, or whatever it is. But it's Corel Video Studio, whatever the top of the line video editing software they have. And it's about a hundred bucks uh, when you first buy it. But when you upgrade from year to year, it drops down to about 60 to 70 bucks. So that's it. So number seven, the first time says, why are some of your videos filmed, others recorded and the rest videoed? I don't know. It's why is it six versus half a dozen? I, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's whatever the mood uh, moves me to say in that moment. I don't script my videos. I, I, <laughs> I never script my videos. I don't plan my videos for the most part. I start filming, <laughs> I start filming and whatever happens, happens for the most part. And there are a lot of videos that I start that I do not finish and or there are videos where I get three quarters of the way through it and I'm like, screw this man, this, this video is going to suck and it just doesn't work out. And those are the videos that you guys never see. All right. Number eight says, can you teach me to weld? <laughs> well. He actually puts wield, but it's weld. Um, I personally probably can't teach you how to weld, but I'm sure there are plenty of other folks that can. 
I kind of just figured it out and I will tell you like I tell I've told other folks how I got to the point where I am is trying I went out and I bought the biggest welder that I could afford so that I could weld the thickest metal that I could I didn't buy the the cheapest like hundred dollar Harbor Freight flux core welder um, when you look at different videos on YouTube and people using the flux core welders versus people using the uh, MIG welders, which is what I have, the MIG to me seemed easier and there was less, th th there was less going on, all right? So that was how I kind of got into it. And there's plenty of folks out there that'll teach you how to weld. There's, there's somebody, um, his name is uh, Jamie, I think it's Jamie, from Weldmonger. Man, that dude is so very good at teaching you how to weld and explaining how to do different things. I highly recommend going to check out his channel. There's other folks out there who I found. There's a guy, his name is, his name is Peter, but he runs a channel, it's called like Zilla. I don't know if it's like Zilla Manufacturing or Zilla Welding or something, but he was another one that I watched back in the day. And uh, there, there, there were a few others, but it was more or less, or more or less how I got to the point where I am now is guessing and checking. I bought a welder. I started welding with it. I I figured it out. Uh, the welders nowadays are pretty good with if you know what gauge metal you have or what thickness metal you have, they'll tell you where to get the settings. And once you get the settings close, you'll figure it out. Hey, oh that doesn't look good, or hey that does look good. And for the most part, you and I doing something in the garage on in the backyard, we're not doing anything super structural. So we're not like building scaffolding or like some some crazy piping so if it's not the best weld it'll still be okay and that's kind of how i feel all right number nine says uh what's coming up in 2021 for dash for steel drum smokers and for your youtube channel justin have you have you watched my channel i don't play in anything i, I don't i am a go with the flow type dude i keep it simple i go with the flow and that's about it. I, I don't have a plan, uh, which is to my detriment, I'm sure. If I planned things out, I'm sure I could get more accomplished probably because I wouldn't be kind of twiddling my fingers trying to figure things out. But to be completely honest, I how I am is, is more go with the flow. I don't necessarily have that I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do this. I, I don't, it doesn't work for me. That, that that doesn't work for me. It might work for other folks to have something a lot more structured and, and, and uh, to have that regimen, but, but not for me. So for 2021, man, uh, I just wanna, I wanna wake up, cook barbecue videos every now and again, talk to you guys, enjoy having fun on the live streams and, and rinse and repeat, man. Seriously, I don't I don't have a plan that and that's my plan to not have a plan. How about that? All right, so number 10 says where do you see yourself in 10 years? Hopefully around secondly 50 uh, 50 and When I turn 50 or when I will be 50 my kids will all be 18 uh, plus and I, I think or I hope that I'll be able to travel more. I I hope that I'll be able to do different things that, that I don't necessarily am not you know financially able to do right now. But I've got some things in place that I'm hoping will come to fruition and, and kind of help me to to reach those those goals, if you will. Some some more financial freedom. How about that? That that would be great if I could just travel more and not have to be tied down and I but again going back to the last question I don't have a plan I just you know I go with the flow uh, number 11 says you ever think about recording your monthly guest stream yard and producing a podcast I really have not had much if any interest in doing a podcast my go-to medium is video my go-to medium is video because you can see my emotions through the video. <laughs> you can see my actions through the video. Though I can film a video and simultaneously 
strip the audio and put it into a podcast, I really would like to put it into a video. I focus on video is because YouTube is monetized for me. If I'm starting all over with the podcast, that is, it's, it's not easy. And I, I wouldn't, I won't say I wouldn't wish that upon anyone because there's plenty of people out there starting podcasts, but I have a firm setting in my YouTube, in the YouTube game. Getting back to my time and what I have time for, me adding a podcast and having to take this video and stripping it out, just the audio to lo upload it somewhere else, that's additional time that I don't necessarily have and I, ca I can't afford to sacrifice right now. <clears throat> Number 12 says, when are you upgrade into a 36 inch Blackstone? I don't know. I don't have the room for a 36 inch Blackstone. The tabletop one that I have is pretty perfect for what I do. It is small and I am limited in space, but one of the, I mean, I, I don't know how else to say it, but I, you know, I have a lot of grills and, and cookers around my house and I just don't know where I could put another three foot of grill space. I, I just don't, or griddle space. I just don't know where I could put it. Number 13 says, how do I convince my wife that I need another smoker. You don't. You you buy it and then ask for forgiveness. Or you get something free or you you yeah you, you I I don't know. I guess I'm lucky in that fact that if I'm buying it, if if it's my money, if it's something I'm getting, my wife just gives me a dirty look and then looks at me funny and she doesn't she doesn't question it. As long as I'm able to provide and, and do the different things that I need to do, if I go out and buy another smoker, yeah, um, she doesn't give me too much grief. She does give me grief for a while, but it's more of a forgiveness than permission type thing. All right, uh, number 14 says, what's the best movie of all time? I don't... I don't know, you know, Russell, he, he comes into the live stream, he asks off the wall questions to like about movies and actors and other things like that. And the, and I, I hate saying it again, but to be completely honest, uh, but I have movies that I like in phases. Like one of my favorite movies of all time, because I'm a car guy, is Smokey and the Bandit. I, I watch Smokey and the Bandit, and almost any time I see it on TV, I watch Smokey and the Bandit. One of my favorite Christmas movies of all time is A Christmas Story. You know, Little Ralphie and, and the, the Red Rider BB gun. Yeah. I, obviously, as I got older, one of my favorite movies, uh, and again, being a car guy, one of my favorite movies or franchises was Fast and the Furious. So you, you can you can give me all the grief and all of the, you know, whatever you want talking about Fast and the Furious. It's still one of my favorite movies, and I will watch all of them again to this day for the most part like some of the later ones like you know towards the end where they just started jumping the shark and being a little too outrageous no but for in the beginning i, I remember almost every video almost every fast and furious movie i've seen in the theaters almost every single one and that's I, I I can't say that about many franchises. Like for the most part, like to me or for me, not a big Scarface, not a big Godfather, not a big Star Wars, not a big Star Trek. I mean, I I never, though I've watched those movies. Those weren't my movies. Like again, I I'm a car guy. You you guys, I, I I've talked to you about watching different you know YouTubers that that do a whole bunch of car stuff. And not as many barbecue folks because deep down, I'd rather you know watch somebody build a a, a drift car or a, a diesel truck or you know <laughs> I I mean I don't know what else but I'm ranch on things you guys some of you guys who have, who are following me on Instagram some of you guys who are following me on Facebook my personal Facebook page um I, I wrench on my own vehicles I work on Vanna. You know, I work on my cars. You guys have seen some videos of me working on Vanna, working on my cars, working on my wife's vehicle, other things along those lines. So, in the end, uh, I say all of that to say, 
it will probably be something car related. Um, but I don't have a, a one specific favorite. I'd be like, this is the one that I want to, I have to watch for the rest of my life. And number 15, though, I think this is actually number 16. He says, is this enough questions? Yes, Justin, that was. I have been talking for 20 five minutes now of course i'm going to edit this up and hopefully it'll be about a 20 minute video but thank you sir so very much for participating i really this the ability for me to answer these questions or for for me to kind of take a mental break from cooking and doing the things that i, I have to do for for cooking videos this is what this allows me um it it, it kind of gives me a mental reset so so come january come whenever i, I put up some more barbecue videos or cooking videos I'm, I'm i'm more apt to be like all right let's go let's do this shall we all right so thank you again uh justin for for this this was great thank you guys for watching thank you guys for participating and asking great questions by the time you see this i probably will have had enough questions to film 31 videos but don't hesitate to ask your question down below. If it's good enough, I might pull out the camera and film a video response for you, but I will try to reply to every single question, every single comment. So don't feel bashful. Please leave your comments down below and I'll see you in the next one.